Hi, I'm Larry Dignan, and we're here with Nathan Fox. He's a senior director of FP&A and Treasury at Harry's, the shaving company. Hi, Nathan. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. So we're here to talk about your analytics and Harry's and how it all goes together. But I guess first, let's just talk about Harry's. And you want to give me a quick up, update on the company and sort of the backdrop? Sure. So Harry's is a, a men's care brand. It's about six years old. Um, and what makes us different uh, in, in part is we own our own manufacturing uh, in Germany. We have a factory that makes uh, our razors. And then we distribute both on our own channel uh, on e-commerce uh, here in the U.S. and the U.K., as well as through channel partners like Target and Walmart uh, and Boots in the U.K. Uh, and so we're operating three different business models uh, between manufacturing, e-commerce, and uh, wholesale retail relationship uh, with our channel partners. And we're operating in three different countries between uh, Germany, the U.S., and the U.K. So, so explain to me the role of analytics and, you know, some, some of the grunt work that had to happen leading up to it. I mean, I guess on the good side, the company's young, so you don't have, you know, half a million legacy systems to integrate. But I guess walk me through the analytic footprint and, you know, how you approach data. Yeah, it's a good question. So since we're a, um, you know, the U.S.-based uh, business is about six years old, uh, for um, our U.S. and U.K. businesses, uh, we, as you said, we really don't have very much in the way of legacy, uh, you know, tech debt to, uh, to deal with. Um, basically, everything is cloud-based, uh, which I think, you know, has been uh, an advantage for us that we're able to, uh, you know, uh, connect systems and, uh, m you know, move quickly with implementation uh, and getting, uh, you know, tools and, and platforms set up. Uh, I think, you know, in Germany, uh, our manufacturing business is quite a bit older. It's almost 100 years old. Uh, so we do have some, uh, some on-premise, uh, you know, legacy uh, technology there, but most of that is for production purposes. Uh, and so uh, there's, you know, not as much of a need to integrate that with uh, some of our sales and distribution systems that we have uh, here in the U.S. and the U.K. So what does the cloud enable you to do in terms of collecting data and integrating systems? Yeah, so the cloud has been uh, really helpful for us uh, until Harry's is about six years old and really for the first five years or so, uh, we didn't have uh, a fully built out IT department uh, to be able to support enterprise IT. And so really teams were doing, uh, you know, able to use the cloud uh, to establish uh, tools and processes uh, themselves without needing to, uh, you know, go through an IT department or, you know, have, uh, you know, a big implementation or, uh, you know, any uh, significant delays. And so I think it allowed us to be uh, fairly agile um, and, you know, uh, be able to keep up with the growth in the business. And, add, you know, as we add complexity, uh, that those business, those business units would have been able to, uh, you know, to maintain their own systems, uh, you know, using, using cloud technology. Uh, I think the downside of that is that over time, uh, you know, the risk is that if you don't then start to, you know, begin to integrate um, and have a, a broader strategy, uh, you can end up potentially with overlapping systems and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, systems that, you know, maybe don't talk to each other or, or work in different frameworks, but we're still young enough uh, that we've been able to, you know, manage that and are now going through uh, you know, a more coordinated effort to, you know, bring those systems, uh, make them more integrated and try to bring everybody up to the same, uh, the same levels uh, across the different platforms. As a financial executive, what, what sticks out for you in terms of the cloud economics and, and, and how it works? I mean, I typically talk to, you know, IT folks a lot, um, but, but how, how does the, uh, financial types view the cloud versus, I, I mean, I realize it's OpEx versus CapEx and all that, but, but I guess what do you see as the wins with the cloud? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, uh, one of the big wins is, uh, you know, is just being able to uh, move from, you know, kind of design and RFP stage, you know, into implementation and then production to really have a compressed window where you can start to see some of the results and, and payback on you know, on those investments. Uh, and then most of the expense profile, uh, you know, for these, uh, these cloud-based systems are, 
they're either annual um, or they're, uh, you know, depending on, on, on the model, sometimes monthly uh, or, you know, kind of a hybrid between the two. Uh, and so instead of, as you said, between CapEx and OpEx, uh, you know, we, we do see the benefit of, uh, of not having to have a, a large upfront investment um, that then you have to, uh, you know, wait to, uh, to, to really get the depreciation uh, and, and see the benefits that way. Um, and then, you know, kind of uh, another aspect is, uh, you know, these systems are, although they require maintenance and development work, uh, for the most part, a lot of that work is able, we're able to do in-house, uh, you know, in, in the teams that are using those, uh, those tools. And so uh, we don't have uh, a ton of need for outside consultants um, or even a large uh, enterprise IT staff to, um, to support that. A lot of the work that's done by uh, experts in those areas are, you know, bridging between systems and trying to, uh, to knit them together so that instead of doing, you know, uh, sending files back and forth between them, that we're able to do, uh, to do that in a more automated, uh, you know, and sustainable way. So uh, specifically for analytics, uh, what are the metrics that matter the most to Harry's? I mean, you have, you got retail, you're touching retail, you got manufacturing, you got e-commerce, you got a lot of moving parts there. So, so I guess if you boil it down, what, what are like the top three metrics you, you know, are kind of go to? Yeah, it's a good question. So each, each, each part of the business, you know, uh, as you said, is looking at, at things differently. So in our manufacturing business, uh, it's really around, you know, output um, and efficiency and utilization, uh, you know, of, of, of the production environment. And then on e-commerce, um, you know, like many, uh, you know, consumer oriented, uh, you know, e-commerce businesses, we're looking at, you know, customers, you know, customer growth, uh, retention, uh, you know, and order volumes. Uh, and then for, uh, you know, with our channel partners, we're looking at, um, you know, how are we, how are we doing in terms of sales to them? And then how are they, you know, ultimately selling uh, at point of sale uh, to the end user? Uh, and since all of those are, you know, related to each other, uh, there's also a lot of work to try to understand, you know, the impact on uh, production and, you know, efficiency there and how that is then translating to, uh, you know, customer sales either on our channel or with our channel partners. Okay. Um, as far as the data wrangling goes, uh, what, what have you been able to automate and what, you know, what, what actually takes like, you know, a lot of data cleansing and backend work to, to make it work? Yeah, it's a good question. I think at least on the finance side, um, we've been able to, uh, to do a decent amount of automation of, uh, you know, I would say things that are happening on a daily basis or an ongoing basis like sales, uh, you know, in cash, for example. Are, are reasonably automated, uh, and then other items are uh, still maybe a bit more manual. Uh, and so, uh, I would say the ones that become more repeatable, uh, you know, are uh, and and take the most amount of manual effort are the ones that are the prime, you know, prime target for uh, trying to automate those over time. Uh, and those uh, tend to go into, for example, in finance, they go into our you know financial you know accounting uh, platforms, and then you know. Based on that, once the um, you know the month is is finished and the the finance team has has closed the books, we're then pushing that into uh, you know into other other places like uh, you know adaptive um, you know business planning cloud and using that for financial analysis and to support uh, you know financial planning and, and reporting um, as a as a way of sharing that information once it's been you know uh, put through the financial um, you know and accounting processes. So in terms of being predictive with analytics and forecasting, um, you know, what, what are you capable of today? And, and, you know, I guess what's, what's the utopia dream in the future beyond yeah, having a crystal ball, of course. Yeah, it's a good question. I would say, you know, that's probably one of the areas that we, you know, any new business, I would say, and certainly six years I would put into that category um, that as we launch new products and new brands and new channels, we don't really have a lot of history um, in many cases, or if we have history, it's fairly limited. Uh, so I think at this stage, we're, uh, you know, can easily, by adding a new channel partner or a new brand or a new product, uh, some of the history is just not really relevant. Uh, we can maybe look at it a little bit for some trends, but uh, it's really hard to draw any kind of conclusions. So I think, you know, uh, 
where we are as sort of our business development uh, and our growth, it's probably not as applicable as it might be for a company that's a little bit more uh, more mature, uh, less in, 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 in a growth stage like ours. Uh, but that's something that we'll be looking ahead, you know, at some point when we've got uh, you know, less, uh, you know, you know, less activity going on and more history to be able to rely upon, then I think we'll be looking to try to squeeze some, uh, you know, insights and, and efficiency, uh, you know, out of these emerging technologies. Okay. So, so what does your cloud footprint look like overall? And, and ultimately, how did you evaluate ROI with that? Yeah, it's been done. I would say it's really been done kind of, you know, team by team. Um, and so I think some of the key features that we've tried to look at uh, when making those evaluations are, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, how well does, does the platform meet the business need both, you know, kind of as it is today and also where we think it's going. So, you know, can it support multiple geographies, for example? Uh, can it, you know, can it uh, work in multiple, uh, you know, languages? Uh, you know, can it deal with, for example, financial systems? Can it work in multiple currencies? Or is it, uh, you know, is it really uh, meant to work just in, in a single currency? Um, and then, to what extent, you know, does it have, uh, you know, the ability to integrate with other systems, either as a, uh, as a source system uh, that feeds others or, you know, as a, um, as a downstream system that, um, that's able to take uh, input from, you know, from other tools. And then ultimately, I think, you know, from a kind of support uh, maintenance and development perspective, you know, how, how easy is it to keep up with the business? Uh, it's a pretty dynamic environment that we're working in. So uh, the ability to add, uh, you know, add new uh, dimensions to, to track the business. Uh, ideally, that's something we'd like to be able to do, uh, you know, in, you know, within the, the, the groups that are using these tools that they'd be able to administer that themselves and coordinate with other teams so that we can, you know, continue to flow information between, between teams and between the systems uh, and keep, you know, uh, keep up with, uh, you know, the growing complexity of the business over time, so. So from a financial perspective, um, what emerging technologies you know, I guess, how do, you, how do you think from a financial perspective, you know, do you think through technologies like AI, automation, machine learning, things like that? Yeah, I think there's certainly some promise, um, you know, from those technologies to get, uh, you know, to find opportunities, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, focus on, you know, customers and products and categories and channels that, that are maybe, you know, not reaching their full potential. Uh, you know, and, and help, help, you know, uh, deliver more value to the customer uh, and, you know, as well return, uh, you know, uh, good benefits to, you know, to the business. Uh, so I think, you know, once those technologies are, uh, you know, accessible uh, and once they're able to, you know, to meet uh, the kinds of uh, stage growth uh, for a business like ours, I think that's something that will be definitely, uh, you know, turning more of our attention to. Okay, thanks for joining us today. Oh, it's been my pleasure, thank you.